Okay, so I uh, am not very prepared, so you'll get to see me like do this from scratch. Um, but the Emberbot, I'll delete this afterwards. <laughs> Uh, so a couple of weeks ago, we, our team moved to Slack, um, and yep. So a couple of weeks ago, our team moved to Slack, um, and one of the things that I really wanted to do was take advantage of their API, uh, which is a lot better than Flowdocs, uh, and like things like. I find things like reactions and stuff like that really interesting and, and ways that that can kind of help manage um, workflows. <clears throat> so what I did was I set out, so there's bots like Whobot and things like that. So there's a lot of like talk around Slack bots and, and bots in general. But I kind of wanted to not write it in JavaScript. But also I kind of thought that Elixir would be a good fit for something like this because it is very process driven. Um, so as I kind of show you what I've built to, um, to kind of like facilitate this Slack bot, um, you'll kind of notice how it's different from like WhoBot or JavaScript bot uh, that you might typically find. Uh, I just need to like pop the uh, keys into my config file. Um, sorry, I'm a little bit unprepared. Uh, dev, yes. Just ignore <laughs> the secret tokens. <laughs> now I'm going to have to rotate them, aren't I? Because this is recorded. Ah, oh, shit. We'll, we'll blur them out in post. OK, that would be much appreciated. Um, <laughs> OK, so uh, why don't we start with Marvin? So Marvin is the framework that allows you to build these kind of uh, bots built in Elixir. Is that large enough? And I'll drag, oop, drag this out. OK, so it started like, I can probably tell you even, maybe th four weeks ago, the 27th of December, 2016. Um, so I started kind of messing around with this idea. And initially, what I had was um, a very simple thing. So I started with like Slack Elixir, which is built by Blake Williams, who works at ThoughtBot. Um, and it's just a really rudimentary kind of basic low level thing to listen to Slack messages and then you can like handle them and send messages. And I was like, okay, so how do I take this and then build like a, a proper thing where you can create like modules that react to different messages and then they react to maybe they react to a, rac a reaction like someone thumbing up a PR or something like that in the Slack and then fire off these uh, these things in a much more modular way and like less of having like everything in one file. Um, and then how do I make that into like a framework that then allows other people to like put it in their projects and just make these bots and with very little lines of code start like creating uh, really fun little workflows that respond to messages or like do certain actions on certain things. Uh, so I, I used this to build uh, Marvin. And Marvin kind of abstracts all that nitty gritty stuff away, um, like connecting to Slack, handling the messages, what's the, like it, it passes like what the type of message is, so whether it's a reaction or a channel join or whether it's like a, there's all this like weird stuff that the Slack API will do. And then just nuts it down to, at the moment, two things. Um, so the idea is that you have a module, so this is like an example of like a bot module. And you can see here I've called it echo bot, uh, even though it doesn't echo. So I have to update the readme. Um, and all you have to do is add use marvin.bot in there. And then this bot is going to become like a listener. Okay. So then you declare what you want to match it against. So this is called a tuple. And you would pass in two things. So you would say this particular bot is going to listen for direct messages. And I've classified those as like at bot. Uh, or if you have a direct conversation with that bot in Slack. And then it's going to do a, a regex pattern match against the sentence. It's really hard to avoid uh, using regex with bots. Um, but 
there's another bot that I'm building uh, that actually avoids using this, uh, that uses like some AI to determine what you're trying to talk to it about. And then all you need to do is declare this method uh, or this function, which is handle message. You get past the message and then like the Slack state. So that has like the connection back to Slack and things like that. Uh, and then you just need to go send message, the message, and then the channel that you want to send it back to. And then it will talk into the thing. Um, so it's like super simple. And that's all you have to do. Then you just let you set your Slack token. And then that's it. This bot, you hit run and it'll connect. You can write hello and it'll respond in the thing. Um, so uh, after you declare like the type of the bots that you want to run. Uh, and then you can do things like match against reactions. So you can have like, uh, does everyone use Slack? When I say a reaction, does everyone know what that means? So like for those who don't, you, someone can post a message and then you can like put like an emoji next to it, which is like a thumb or really any emoji. Um, so one of the things that we do, or one of the things that I do, is if someone posts something really interesting or funny or whatever, we'll add the like spinning Mario coin to it. Um, so now we have this bot which listens for a reaction and it cases the type of reaction that someone posted and then counts the amount of coins that that individual who posted that message gets. And then that person can like check how many coins they have and then spend the coins on nothing. Um, <clears throat> we're like de trying to determine what we will spend the coins on. Um, so you can, you can say like match reaction and then uh, what that's going to do is just listen for reactions and then you can you get past the message, which is the uh, message from Slack. You can check the type of the reaction. And if it's the coin, then you can like put like log a coin was given. So this is like how you use Marvin. It's very, or I like to think it's kind of simple. Um, that being said, I have changed this multiple times in the last, like you can see, like my last commit was eight hours. Uh, I've changed the way matching and stuff works. So, but I've tried to keep it versioned. Um, Anyway, so yeah, that's, that's Marvin. Does, any questions about like that particular part? Okay, cool. Uh, so we can close that. So with any luck... Actually, I do have a quick question. So, so the, the code is, where does the code actually be reside? Where is it executed? Yeah. Sure, so Marvin is broken down into, into like two modules really. There's core and bot. So this is core. Um, and this uses that original Slack implementation by uh, Blake Williams to handle the connection and stuff like that. And then I just listen for like different events. Uh, and then what happens is if uh, there's like different message types. So I, I rely really heavily on, on message, uh, on pattern matching, sorry, to pull out the right types of messages that I want to listen to and then ignore the ones that I don't want to ignore or that I don't, that I don't care about. Um, which is one of the reasons why I think this suits uh, Elixir so well is because it's incredibly hard to bring this bot down. Um, because if someone sends a message that it doesn't know about, uh, down the bottom I've pattern matched against anything. Like anything that I haven't said I want to listen to before and then I just ignore it. Um, it's just the, the one thing that got me like a few times was that Slack has these like subtypes, so it has a type of message, and then these this would run, and then like message user wouldn't be there. Uh, so then I realized, okay, well there's these subtypes, so now I pattern match. So now since I've done that, this bot like hasn't gone down uh, due to like getting some sort of like weird message that it doesn't understand. Um, <clears throat> so then what it does is it actually boots up each of those bots, so like echo bot and things like that it'll actually boot up each of those bots as a separate process and it'll monitor them. So if I send a message, it'll hit core bot and then core bot will actually go through each of the bots and check for a match before executing any code. And then it will push the message through to that bot and then that bot will take it and it'll like do whatever. At that point, core bot doesn't care about it anymore. Um, and then the beauty of that is that if that particular like if something happens in that like loop uh, that causes that particular bot to crash, all the others stay up and the core bot stays up as well. Um, so if you're thinking like a conversational bot say, where you might have five people having different conversations with that bot, you can 
spin up a process for each conversation and then if one person's conversation goes down for whatever reason, you lose none of the state of all the other conversations. Um, so that's essentially what Corebot is. It's like a dispatch thing. It just pulls in the message and then like it throws it around in here for a little while until it makes it to a bot. Uh, and then all a bot is, is uh, a gen server. So it's like a, a module that will like loop state through itself and just keep every function will return the state so that it like remembers uh, different things. But you pass messages into it and then it will uh, do something with that message and then the message will either return something or it'll just say I have nothing to return to you and it'll continue. Um, so in this case we never really return anything to the core bot because there's nothing that we need to return. Um, so you'll see here this is where the message comes in uh, and then I cast it to this function here which then calls handle message on the bot that you implement. So I've abstracted all of that kind of gen service stuff and all that state management away uh, and I've nutted it down to this like one function which is handle message which you would override in your own bot. Uh, and even then I've pattern matched it so if you don't, if you forget to do it, it's not going to crash. Uh, and is that case standard, uh, yeah, yeah. Okay, that over, <coughs> uh, over the devil handle message column two. That is the arity of the yep. function. Yep. Yep. And the mass so this just means that because if I was to uh, if I was to use use and then not say that this was overridable, this would actually capture all the messages. Uh, and it, their, their handle message would never run. So by saying that this is overridable, it means that when they declare this, then mine will be gone. Okay, yeah. because it happens to be sooner on the... Yeah, message. yeah, yeah, yeah. 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 Uh, and same with match, because you need to declare a match in order to have the bot listen. So by default, they'll listen to everything. Uh, but this is actually broken because it should return a tuple. Uh, and then you can do things like macros. So uh, basically this is how I define those, those match functions that you saw earlier in, uh, in EchoBot, so this thing. So at compile time, it will take these two arguments direct, or this one argument, this tuple, and it will generate a function within that bot called isMatch, and it will it just, it's kind of like, uh, because you have no state, you can't like store that thing like anywhere when you first create that, that bot. You can't have match that then saves to an instance variable. You have to store that state somewhere. So I've like declared this or created this function to hold on to that for me. Um, so in reality, what will happen is this unquote will actually unquote that and it's kind of like writing that function by hand. Does that make sense? Uh, and then I just like is match. So I have to match against the tuple, but also against just the atom, which is the symbol. Um, so there's two there. And you can have these guards as well, right? So I can say uh, match this type when this type is an atom, or I can say match against this one when match pair is a tuple. So then I'm only running those. Anyway, that's like pretty much how Marvin works. Uh, so it's, it's quite simple, but then you can have, uh, you can write bots. So uh, if I look at, so the tube status, <coughs> uh, let me just boot the bot up. Okay, so it's connected to Ember London as Ember bot. Um, let me find him or her. Okay, so you can see it's online. So I can say, uh, like if we were to look at tube status, um, so all I've done is I've declared alphabot tube. Oh yeah, sorry. Is that better? A bit more? There we go. Uh, then I've, uh, I've said, okay, use Marvin bot, and that's going to import all of those bot functions that we saw before. Uh, and then I match it against a direct message and I match it to like a sentence that includes tube status. 
So then if I go tube status in here, it will paste all of the tube status. And you kind of didn't see it, but it will also indicate that the bot is typing it. I really like that. <laughs> I think it's pretty cool. <laughs> um, so in like long running stuff, so there's one where uh, I go and fetch all the open PRs for like certain repositories. And that's like goes through like a fairly hefty amount of steps, it takes a little bit longer for that stuff to, to run. So you kind of see this like uh, ember bot is typing and it's like it's a human. <laughs> uh, so the way I kind of format my bots is I will try and use piping as much as possible. So I'll take the initial message and then I'll like fetch the status and then that will format the response and then format the response will actually be the first argument of this send the attachment. Uh, so if you're not familiar with piping, all you're doing is you're taking the result of the previous function call and passing it in as the argument of the next one. So the, in this instance, it results in the attachment being uh, this list of um, line, line statuses, which is what we see here, sent as an attachment. Um, so there's another one, so if we want to look at like a, a much simpler one, there's greeting bot, and if you say hello, it'll just say hey. Uh, and again, like super simple, like this, that's all that bot, that bot has. Um, so then if we were to look at the coin one, okay, so this is hard to demo uh, because I would need someone to log into Slack uh, who is in like Ember London. Um, thanks. So if I was to go into here and then, ah, oh, who's here that I can find? There it is. Okay, so hopefully this works and I have read it. Oh, we don't have the coin. I can change it. I can change it. Uh, Ah, uh, I'll just do cry, because I saw that <laughs> one. <laughs> okay. So I have to just reboot the bot. So it is possible to hot reload code. So if I was to change this, just this one file, I could actually push that up without, click, well, without killing the bot, and then tell it to like just reload this one file, and then the bot never dies. Uh, so hopefully this works, uh, but if I go and give Miguel cry. Just check it didn't crash. So then if Miguel writes uh, alphabot, how many coins do I have? Uh, sorry, emberbot, uh, how many coins do I have? Oh, I have to invite it. You get used to like copying and pasting codes. Um, <clears throat> so I have zero coins, but if Miguel does it, he'll have hopefully one coin, uh, but it'll actually be a cry. Oh, you have to at, alpha, at emberbot, sorry. Oh, it has to be a new message. You're killing me, man. <laughs> it does, I just don't respond to it yet. <clears throat> yeah, so he has zero coins. Oh, well. oh, maybe it's because it didn't match against cry properly. Oh, wait, I didn't change it. What did I do? Oh, that's if you remove a cry. Okay, okay, I'm with it now. All right, let me give you another cry. So if you remove the cry, I have minus one. Well, let's not test it because that's embarrassing. Okay, so now if you just copy and paste that. Oh, well, you have two. Oh, someone else <laughs> cried on cried on you. Uh, so yeah, I mean, it's pretty. It's. I mean, this is like. So a lot of this stuff at this point is experimentation. Um, but the idea is to take the like uniqueness of Slack and like reactions and all these other integrations that it has, and then kind of work off that. So I can imagine uh, what I'm working on next for Marvin is adding. Uh, like a, a router which can accept webhooks. So then when you open a PR on GitHub and you can go like, I need a review, it will hit 
the bot, which will then post it in the channel. And then if someone adds the eyes emoji to it, it will then allocate them to that PR, which will then post in the thing, hey, Will's going to look at this. And then you can go like, you know, Emberbot, what PRs do I have to review? And then it'll list the PRs and things like that. Um, so I have like big aspirations for, for Emberbot. Um, when can I <laughs> if you pay for Slack, they have an email ingestion service. Oh, yeah. I think it's like the standard tier. So yeah, yeah like totally. yeah, any any company that's using that and like more than five integrations would would have an email ingestion service, which you could hook up today, and we use it. Yeah. Uh, the other thing I would say about like building a bot is that like get ready to talk to your bot a lot um, <clears throat> and for it to never talk back to you a lot either. Um, it's quite a lonely life. Um, so one other thing that I'll show off just before, uh, and I'm not going to demo this because it's, I can't guarantee that it will work, um, is that on another branch, I've actually integrated this bot with wit.ai. Uh, so wit.ai is, is an interesting company. Has anyone heard of Facebook M? Yes. The, the messaging thing, so you can like ask it anything. So they bought this company and that's what they turned into uh, Facebook M. So what I've done is when you ask it a question, it will send that string to wit.ai, which will then determine the intent of that message. So rather than saying like tube status, you can say like what is what is the state of the lines at the moment or what is the state of the tube or how's the tube looking and things like that and it will determine from that that you mean uh, tube status and you can see here like me trying to teach this bot how to like understand the tube status uh, so you can do all types of things and then you use that response to match rather than regex so you send it off to this like service which determines the intent and then sends back, okay, you actually mean, like it normalizes it, says, okay, it's tube underscore status, and these are the entities. So these is like they wanted the Victoria line or something like that. Um, so I think this is really interesting as well. But it's a lot harder to do conversations and things like that because you kind of have to, I haven't quite worked out how this would look. Uh, and then relying on another service is also something that I don't particularly want to do, especially one that's like bought by Facebook. Um, <laughs> or Google or any of those. Uh, so I'm, I'm a bit cautious about building a whole bot that like relies on this type of thing. Uh, but I still think it's really interesting and it was pretty trivial to integrate this into the bot initially. Any questions? Uh, I can show more bots. I have heaps. Do you have a bot that swears at you? It'd be tr easy to make. I can make it right now. <laughs> <laughs> <coughs> yes. So you can you can get the bot to message specific people. Uh, so in this example, yeah. As an example, so similar but not swearing. Uh, so we have like. Uh, at the moment, I think we have 150 people, and they have like different channels all over the place. So in each channel, I, I put Ember uh, Alphabot, and then they can just ask Alphabot for help, and then it will message me and say, "Hey, this person needs help in this channel." So then I don't have to have like 50 channels open on the side. So I'm like making the bot do my dirty work, <coughs> which is the goal. Goal is very good. Yeah. So this, this one just goes and grabs all the PRs for a particular uh, GitHub repo and then displays them in like a formatted way. So like it's, it's very easy to create like just little <laughs> recipes, I guess, that do, do things. Cool. And that's Thank it. No worries.